in the spotlight this week, Corridorus <laughs> Aeneas. He said Aeneas. <laughs> or as those common folk know them, the Bronze Corridorus. And now, for the signs bit. Yes, so this week we'll be taking a look at one of my favorite fish, the Corridorus. And in particular, the Bronze Corridorus. This fish is found all over the South Americas, from Trinidad all the way down to Argentina. So the Bronze Corridorus is part of the catfish family, and then instead of having scales like normal fish, it's got some called shoots on the side of it, which are a hard bony like plate, which makes this a very adaptable fish because not many other fish will try to eat it. That combined with the fact that it's got stings located along its dorsal fin and just behind its dorsal fin, that can produce a sting that is almost the equivalent to a bee sting. So other fish, when they're trying to bite them, tend to leave them alone. The fish grows to about two and a half inches for a male and about two and three quarters for a female. You can tell the females because they're a little bit broader and have a bigger, fuller belly than the male counterpart, which is more torpedo in shape. The average lifespan is apparently 10 years, but I've not had one live that long yet. It's got a pinkish hue to its fins and its undercarriage, and also from its face over the back, it tends to be like a, a bluish, brownish kind of color, grayish kind of color. There's also that part of the head tends to have a, like a orangey little patches, streaks going backwards. Not to be confused with other fish like the equis and things like that but you will see a little bit more orange on the back of the heads you can view that better when you look down over in a bowl or in a stream view if you're looking up to a bay over in trying to tobago and see the macula in the natural habitat if you look down over you'll see these two little streaks like malin streaks on the back of the head on the flanks of the fish is this greenish brownish color hence the name Bronze Corridorus. Depending on how you look at it, how light hits it, it will show up like tarnished brown. This greenish brownish colour is also why it also gets its name the Green Corridorus. They are found in quite shallow waters with a soft bottom that can sometimes be heavily polluted by clouds of disturbed mud from the bottom. So if you're going to do it yourself, try and mimic it. Get a fine sand. The work better on fine sand. Not saying don't get gravel, just be a little bit more careful when you're picking your substrate for your catfish. In its native habitat, the temperature range is between 25C and 28 degrees C, which is 77 to 82 Fahrenheit. The pH is 6 to 8, and the hardness from 5 to 19 degrees hardness. Like most members of the genus Corridorus, these catfish have a unique method of coping with low oxygen content. It utilizes the gills like any other fish, but then rapidly can swim to the top to take in a gulp of air. Now, when you see this, you'll think, oh, there's something wrong. I haven't got enough oxygen. It isn't. What it's, what it's actually doing yeah, is it's, it's using its labyrinth organ to absorb it through the walls of its intestines and any surplus is expelled through the vents. When you're picking this fish, try and get quite a few, because in the wild, they do tend to stay in schools of about 20 to 30. Try to give the fish uh, a little playground, plants, rocks, things like that, where, it can, where it's not getting bothered. It's not getting bothered and it can always hide from other fish if you're having them in a community tank. Um, you look yeah when i do introduce them into this tank i'm not saying it's going to be the bronze that's going to be yeah i may go for a different species altogether who knows you would have seen plenty of footage of me ones upstairs as i've been dropping in at this video and the fish is an omnivore so it will feed on anything that's on the bottom worms insect larvae decaying matter even other fishes poop they'll go through the lot Statistics have shown that you're more likely to listen to a man in a white coat. So with that being said, please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you. 
So when it comes to reproduction of this fish, now this is when it gets really interesting. If you actually are looking to breed a fish, this is a great fish to start with because they're like rabbits, proverbial rabbits. Basically what you'll, as long as you've got two males and a female, that's the best number to actually start it off. You'll see what's happening is teeing, where the, the, they'll start all over the tank, you'll see the female and two males will tee against it like that. And what they're actually doing is pushing the belly, stimulating the sex organs, push the eggs out. The female then collects them eggs in her pelvic fins, keeps a hold of them, darts around the tank, tries to find somewhere to lay them eggs. It's only a flat, smooth surface. Nine times out of 10, it's the aquarium glass, but they will do it on leaves and other, other flat surfaces. And then the males come across and they fertilize it with their sperm afterwards. This whole process normally takes part after you've done a big water change in your tank. You've either lowered the temperature or changed the pH slightly to mimic what happens in the wild when a, a, a rainfall happens. So then it turns into spawn season and then it happens. And it's a great thing to watch because I mean, not all fish are that easy to breed. So these ones make it especially easy for you to watch and record if you want to do. So it's up to you know, how you deal with the eggs. You can either pull the eggs out the tank and have a separate tank, or you can leave them in a species only tank. If you leave them in a in a tank like this where you've got angel fish and other predators, they will pick up their eggs quite rapidly. Before they've even laid, the next thing you'll see is just empty egg casings all over where the, the other fish have took them off. Now that's even your tetras, the tetras will be like little piranhas against them. So if you want to try and breed them, you've got two choices. You can have a species only tank where they'll just hatch. They will eat their own young as eggs. So it depends on where they've been stuck to be quite honest. But if it's a species only tank, you're gonna have a, a, you're gonna have a, a low yield of eggs hatching. If you want to take it serious, you can actually pull the eggs, put them in like a tumbler thing with an oxygen line. Add, you can do it chemically or you can do it naturally with a, a katapa leaf, but you can add methylene blue and an air line to bubble the eggs to keep them from getting their um, fungus growing on them. A lot of people actually will put a shrimp in with them and the shrimp will just go along with its feet and take all the fungus off and roll the eggs all individually until the hatch and when that if the egg doesn't get fertilized and it, you'll notice it's a white egg rather than a like a clear kind of see-through one where you actually see the little if you look close enough on this glass, you'll see a little black dot within the egg that's a fertilized egg um, when you are pulling them out the tank, they are very sticky and you will break some. So it's best to try and roll them with your finger against the side of the tank, just to keep them as egg shaped. A lot of people say use a credit card, use a scraper, something like that. But I've never had much luck with that because it damages the eggs sometimes when you, especially with a credit card. Scraper not so much, but when you're trying to get them back off the scraper, Stanley blade, you can't damage them. So I find basically roll them, roll them in your fingers, stick them in the jaw where you're having them. That works fine for me. So you'll see the eggs, they're being groups of like fours and fives all over the place. And it's normally around about 20 to 30 eggs in a clutch every time they do it. So depending on how many you've got, will depend on how many eggs you get all together. But they, like I say, these are like rabbits. So be prepared to have space to grow them out if you're growing them out. Pet shops will take them, but they'll not give you much money for them. But the fish don't pay off and they don't pick like the same mate. It's basically who's ready, who goes. It's more of a random thing than what you get with angel fish or any other species where they pay off and then they tend to, you tend to have to force that pay apart to get different things happening. These are more random. Um, it's good for the 
the lineage because obviously it's getting more of a random mix each time they do it between bigger schools of fish. Now with all species, you can get the albino variety of them. Uh, the albino variety of these are quite popular in the hobby as well. You'll see them, they look exactly the same shape wise because um, there's not much difference between all the, the lineage seven, which these are part of. So notable is actually in that lineage are your equis and your Venezuelans and your Schultzes and your Abatis. So if it's the same lineage and you've got the same kind of lineage in your tank, you may get cross species crossing over. So you need to be careful when you're picking your, your, your different types of quarry to go in your tank because some will mate with, with different types. And that's what makes these one of the most popular catfish for new beginners because it's so hardy, so easy to breed and you'll have a lot of fun with this fish to be quite honest. You'll see the full gamut of how the fish reacts, everything. Going back to your albinos, if you get albinos, albinos you'll tend to see more out on the front. It's almost like they've given up on trying to hide. They'd say, where can I hide? Look at this. I stick out like a sore thumb. Where your bronze ones will be more, what's the word? Mm, more of a secluded fish. It will hide out the back and you'll just see it come feeding time, things like that. Um, that might be a thing for you, but it's something to look at before you actually set up your tank. If you give them a lot of hiding spaces, there's a good chance you'll never see them. I made that mistake when I've done my tank upstairs, that's actually got the bronze in. I made too many hiding spaces, never seen them for three weeks. The only time I've seen them is when I put food in and then that, that was it. Um, the food that they like, I feed them is Vitalis catfish pellets and also bloodworms and also the, the save up everything that's been left. That's what makes it one of the best fish for cleanups. It'll save everything that's on the bottom, it'll eat all the food, all the waste matter it can eat, and it'll also, with its tail, flick all the other stuff into the water column and then you filter does that job by straining the poop out. And that's all you really need, really. You don't need these massive filters with loads of filtration. As long as you've got the right kind of fish in your tank, that's going to help it keep it in the water column so the filter can do its work. So you've got your eggs, you've got them pulled, and it's time for them to start hatching. Depending on temperature, this could take between anywhere between two and five days, judging on temperature and how well you've looked after them. So like I say, if you went the methylene blue, you're going to get higher yield. If you went the natural way, you're going to get less yield, but you're going to get a stronger fish, simple as that. So when you've got them to the hatch stage, what you'll find is you'll have tiny little ones. They'll start off looking bigger because they've still got the egg sac to in a couple of days time. In a couple of days time, you might even notice that they're there, that they'll be that small compared to when you've seen them swimming around the egg sac. So don't worry about that. That's the time when you need to start to be feeding them. These are baby brain shrimp, are fantastic. Um, a lot of people use breeder boxes. Uh, that's what I tend to use, a breeder box. Hangs on the side, a pump, pumps water in, goes through, up, back into the tank. Keeps it the same parameter as, as what's in the tank. Um, be very careful with these because they've got little gates on. The gates, sometimes the slats on the gates are not close enough to stop your little catfish from swimming out back in the tank and being eaten by the other fish. So be, be careful, I tend to swap that out for a bit of sponge, a bit of coarse sponge, just to let the water go through. But if you do that, just remember that that sponge is going to clog like a sponge in a filter. And if it is clogged, the water is going to spill out over the top and it'll go on the floor because it's an external breeder box. So be careful with that. Um, once they get up to about a quarter of an inch size, you'll start to see the color starting to come in. A uh, quarter of an inch, I'm, I'm gonna keep my trim little pinky. Probably about the size of your little pinky, quarter of an inch. Once they get that size, they'll start to show the colors. Until then, you can't really tell what they're actually gonna be as a species, unless you know what the parents are, obviously. Silly belly. Um, 
I tend to, in the breeder box, keep them in there till about a quarter of an inch, then I'll pull them out of there and I'll put them in a smaller tank, similar like that. I'll put sand on the bottom just to get the barbels working as how they do, sifting through the sand. That's the best thing to do. Get them on sand as quick as possible. If an infection's gonna happen, it's like, well, it's like us as kids. It's best to get that infection when you're young. Because when you get older and your barbells start to fall off because they've rotted, because uh, you've got bacteria in them, things like that, it's like us as older people, it, tech, it tends to take a lot longer for them to repair. But they will repair. Um, some of the other things to watch out for as they're getting older, and depending on the diet, if you're feeding them a lot of protein, i.e. your blood worms, you will tend to get uh, protein blisters on this fish. You'll see big white blisters on the fins. Um, just watch out for the, the diet from then on. Try to rein it back and go more for the, like your pellets and sort of stuff like that. These protein blisters, they will burst. They'll take half the fin away. Don't worry, the fin will grow back. Um, just add a bit of Melifix in. Is it Melifix? Add a bit of that in the tank just to prevent it from getting infected as it's happened. Um, that, that's the best way I've found, just adding a bit of that in, if you do see a protein blister. What they will say to you when you go to the shop is always, they always say, buy in sixes. As long as you're getting enough for them to be sociable, as simple as that. I would say minimum of three, minimum of three. Um, I wouldn't just get one. A lot of people do that, mind that, but it's they'll get one of a lot of different species of catfish so it's still like a, a shoal in action not a school in action that you'll see so in conclusion this fish is probably the ideal fish of choice for a new aquarist because it's so easy to keep very hardy some of the catfish species tend to be a little bit more finicky when it comes to getting the correct parameters right for that fish this fish will tolerate most things you can hire at it and a lot of mistakes that you're going to make is a new aquarius at the start we've all done it don't worry about it it's a horrible thing but it does happen but this fish along with a lot of the, the hardier tetras will give you a good like standing in the in the aquarist hobby before you even get into like your, your bigger fish and things like that start little build up same with your tank start little build up don't jump straight in and say i want to be an aqua because it's not going to happen <sighs> so hopefully this has helped you in choosing the bronze corridor as one of your potential fish going forward i love the fish hopefully you do until next time 